feeling like taking a coffee break? So do I. What about we talk about JEP361 about switch expressions? This JEP has been delivered in the JDK14 in March 2020 as a final and permanent feature. You may have been using the switch syntax forever in Java. So you may be wondering what does this JEP bring to the language? Well, up to this JEP, what you have been writing are switch statements and what this JEP brings are switch expressions. Switch statements and switch expressions are two different things that coexist in the Java language. Java is a backward compatible language, so you can still use switch statements if you wish. Before talking about switch expressions and why they are so great, let me go through the switch statements and what can be improved with this syntax. The switch statements are one of the five ways to control the flow of your program in Java. You have the if and if else, the while and do while, you have the for loop, and actually you have two for loops. Then you have the branching instructions, break, continue, and return. And then you have the switch statement. A switch statement works with an argument called a selector variable. If this argument is null, then you'll get a null pointer exception. You don't want to do that, so do not pass null values to a switch statement. Then the value you pass decides which branch of the switch will be executed. There is a limited set of valid types you can use for this variable. Namely, you have primitive types and not all of them. You only have byte, short, char or int. And you have the corresponding wrapper types, byte, short, character or integer. Those are classes. Then you have the enumerated types and the string of characters starting with Java SE7. It is worth noting that long, boolean, float and double are not supported by the switch statement. You cannot pass a selector variable of this type. Then uh, there is a block, which is the switch body. The body is made of cases with a label or a default clause that does not take a label. The switch evaluates its selector variable and executes the code starting at the right label. And here is the first source of bugs of switch statement. There is this fall through behavior. You need to add a break if you do not want all the code that follows a case to be executed. Sometimes you need this fall through behavior, like in this example, and sometimes you don't need it. It is a bug if you forget this break statement. So you just need to be extra careful with that. This fall through behavior is not completely bad because it allows you to chain several cases as you can see on this example. But in the end, this fall through behavior leads to many hard to fix bugs. So let us see now the JEP361 and the switch expressions. Once again, this JEP is very interesting to read. It's a very educational document, so you should definitely read it if you want all the details. The motivation of this JEP is to fix three problems with the switch statement. The first one, of course, is this fall through behavior. This is a place for bugs to hide, and you don't want that in your applications. You probably have enough of them without the switch statement. The second one is the block of code of the switch, which is treated as just one single block. It prevents you from defining a variable locally to a case branch. And there are many cases where you need to do that. And the third one is that the switch statement is precisely that, a statement. It is not an expression, so it does not produce any value. And sometimes, if a switch could produce a value, it would make your code much more readable. So the switch expressions bring a new syntax to write the case. 
instead of writing this code, you can now write that code. This neat syntax with a little arrow written in ASCII art may look like a lambda expression, but it has nothing to do with a lambda expression. It allows you to group several labels together, which is awesome. And what you have on the right-hand part of this arrow is a block of code. And you can use curly braces if you have several statements in this block of code. This point fixes one of the problems of the switch statement, which is the whole body of the switch statement is a single block of code. Here is another example of a switch expression in action. And because each case has its own block of code, no more fall through, which means no more place for bugs to hide here. There is still a little syntax problem that we need to address though. Suppose you use the curly braces for your case blocks of code. To produce a value, you need a return statement. But writing this return statement with a return keyword would lead to an ambiguity. Just take a look at this code. What does this return statement in the case block really mean? Does it mean that you are returning a value for this case block? Or does it mean that you should be returning a value for the method that you're in, for the enclosing method. Mm, there is definitely something that is ambiguous here, and ambiguity is a very nice place for bugs to hide. You do not want that in your code. So to remove this ambiguity, the choice has been made to use a new statement, which is the yield statement instead of the return statement. Note that yield is not a reserved keyword of the language, so you can continue to use it in other places in your code. You cannot declare a yield variable in a case block of code, but it's fine to have such a variable name in other places in your application. So the correct code is in fact this one. The previous example does not compile. A case block of code yields a result it does not return a result, so no more ambiguity here. If you really prefer the previous syntax with case followed by a label and the colon character, then you can still use it in switch expressions. But to be honest, I would not recommend that. I think you should really embrace this new syntax. Last point about switch expressions, this syntax can detect if your cases cover all the possible cases for the selector variable you are providing. This may be the case for enumerated values, for instance. If you have all the enumerated values in your switch, then you do not need a default close. This has to do with exhaustiveness, a topic we will cover in more details later, probably another time. We will talk more about switch expressions because in the JDK 17, we have a preview feature in the JEP 406 about pattern matching for switch. So pattern matching will be supported by switch expressions, but that is for another time. And well, I am out of coffee, so that's it for today. Talk to you soon. Bye.